All right, today I'm gonna to show you how one person can get 50 birds into that coop easily. All right, before we get into that, it's a video, it's kind of a, a difference on a video that we did the last time, but I know there's a lot of new people here, so I want to show you that again, how one person, there's a lot of you folks out there doing it by yourselves, we're going to show you how you do that, but before we do that, here's their compost cage, I want you to check this out, this is the chicken tractor on steroids, now I got this turned off, and you'll see their feeder, their little chick feeder, has been up here and they've been getting fed within this compost cage. They're very comfortable getting into this to eat. So that's critical in this chicken tractor on steroids induction phase. They also have another feeder back here. Either tomorrow or the next day, the feeder's gonna go away. I'm gonna start fermenting their chick food and that's what's gonna be going down in here. Now, if you could get close, I don't know that you can. It's also at this point, I'm also gonna start taking comfrey things like that, any weeds, anything you've got, but comfrey is awesome. So we put that into the cage as well. Okay, so that'll be in there. Not only, it's doing two things. They're gonna eat from it what they want. And also at the same time, that comfrey is gonna act as something of an activator for that compost pile. So let me get this other feeder in here and we'll get on to it. All right, so all that's set and it's ready to rock and roll. Now. You're probably wondering, okay, I got all these birds. If you've ever raised birds before, meat birds, layers, whatever, when this this age, everybody always has a really hard time trying to get them back into the coop. Well, today we're gonna to show you how I've been doing it for, I had to invent this method. If somebody else has done it this way, I don't know about it. But there was a time when I was running birds in Texas on a job, we've talked about that before, and I had to find, I had to come up with some clever ways to get them trained to go back in there at night. Otherwise, you gotta have to snatch them out from underneath, put them back in. When I came up with this, it made life easy. And all you really need, and I got a couple of, I got a varieties, I got like this thing that, you know, works on like paper chip or potato chip bags, and then I got regular clothespin, and I got a six by eight tarp that I just got off the shelf at Tractor Supply. So let's just say you're the only person doing this. Let's just go ahead and start off this way. I'm just gonna fold this thing out. And if you see, it's roughly about the width of my, of the area that I have them in. So we're gonna call that about eight feet wide. So they're already being trained now. So I'm gonna slip this underneath all this, but any of them that are under here, yep, they got to go. And I'm just gonna slide this in underneath. Okay, ordinarily, I would want that tarp to be much longer, but it's not. But because it's blue and it's not something they're used to, I can pretty much, with this little stick right here, usually takes me about three passes to get them all in, but I've never done it with this on top before. So all we're gonna do is make their best option that hole. So all I'm gonna do is just kind of nudge them a little bit, And I'm gonna work them back with this one stick. It usually goes better if I have two. You don't have to get them all, just get a few. They see that blue back there and they're less prone. You want their best option to be that hole. Nudge them along a little bit. So you'll see that I'm not having to get them out from underneath the tractor. It would work better if I had like a 10 foot tarp. I just grabbed whatever was available. All I need them to know, because they, they're not used to seeing that blue, their best option is that hole right there. Okay, there you have it. So you're gonna go through that. Depending on the intelligence of your chickens, honestly, those Bielfelders, they took to this in like a day or two. They are without a doubt the most intelligent birds I ever dealt with. But these ginger broilers, I've never dealt with them before, but typically, we get, we've even done older videos with just a couple of sticks get them in there the key is when it comes to chicken psychology is just giving them that hole is the best option that's really it in a nutshell so also during this chicken tractor on steroids induction phase like i said this is the last of their dry food that they're ever going to get dry i'll probably run them out for a month 
using the uh, stuff that I ferment. They're basically getting chick food, but I'm going to ferment it. It's going to go right in this compost cage, and every single day I'm going to put things in there like comfrey, okay? Lots of it. If you need any, we got it at the website. Also, from this point, we're going to actually, tomorrow morning, we're going to open this thing up a little bit more when it comes to this system. We're going to give them a little bit more space, and now that that hawk has seemed to find something else to eat, we can roll this thing out a little bit more, but we're going to keep it very narrow. That's, that's critical. We want to make sure that that hawk has no easy way in and easy way out. Plus, it's going to bear these guys out to where they can keep rocking and rolling. All right, it's the following morning. And whenever you're going to make any big changes in their lives, which today is going to be for them, not tragic, but big, you want to make sure you do it in the morning before they get out of there. So they make the adjustment all day long, and then when they go back in, it becomes more like clockwork. First thing we're gonna do is take this off, this little uh, hawk protector thing that we created, and we're gonna weed eat down below there, expand their area, and then they'll be off and running. All right, right now, the end of the fence goes here. All we're gonna do is expand. We're gonna make it go more that way. So all she's gonna do is walk this out, and they got a little bit more area for activity. Do I like anything via love? No, I don't. But we gotta be a warrior too, cause that's just what warriors do. All right, here we are. Uh, the compost cage is still pretty low. And that's all on us because we've been traveling and doing a bunch of stuff. Um, we haven't stayed on top of this the way we would have liked, but that's one of the beauties about this because this system is very, very forgiving in a lot of different ways. You just have to make adjustments. This isn't one of those systems where you can just throw the stuff out there and have a nice day. Okay, up until now, up until last night, the, way, the main way they were getting their food was out of those feeders. Okay, if I hadn't been gone, I would have made this transition already. But now we laid down some comfrey. They're gonna realize, hey, that's pretty beneficial. And then it's feed, which is basically the store-bought feed, I'm gonna stick it right there. There you go. I had it sitting in water because if you don't, and you have real crumbly stuff, it's just gonna fall in between there as they're scratching, which we want to encourage. So right now, the only thing that's gonna happen, they're realizing, they're gonna come back out and realize, oh shoot, where's our feeder? But they've already been accustomed to getting in and out of this cage. They're gonna find it pretty quick. Now that we have everything hopping and popping over here, I'll put their hot wire back on. I'm just gonna move the tractor a little bit. The manure load is a little bit higher than it should be under there, but that's fine. We haven't yet put the diaper on this thing to collect all that material. But the area where they are is where the new, when we decide to break this down next week and we reposition this thing, it's going to be right over that right there. Okay? Just take this stuff incrementally. So, next thing I'm going to do is just kind of move them down a little bit, about half the distance of the tractor. So, during the heat of the day, they got a little bit of, first of all, that little thing overhead is going to provide something of a little bit of shade. But also, underneath here, it's also doing some pretty cool stuff, too. Um, adding another microclimate that these guys are really going to dig. Okay, I moved them about half the distance. But this is critical, y'all. Do not let them birds out and then move the tractor. Do your moving before you ever let them out. Because I don't care how well trained they are, until they're about a year old, they don't really know how to find I don't care if you move it six inches. Another awesome trick I got from Joel Salatin. All right. So here we are, we're about to let them out. And like I said, they're gonna have to figure things out all over again, but it's been done incrementally. See, it happened in record time, so these are smart birds. All we need is just one bird to figure it out. And it's like the hundredth monkey thing. So they now, check him out, he's over here eating this comfrey. Okay, it's feeding them, it's also adding more to the pile. He'll stop when he's had enough, so there's no danger of him overeating because there's plenty of stuff out here. There's plenty, plenty, plenty of stuff out here that they can eat, so he won't overdo it and eat too much of it. He'll just take and all the rest of them. So by the end of today, that comfrey's gonna be gone, and they have now figured out this is where they go to get their grub. Pretty cool, huh? All right, so all we gotta do now is put their, um, we'll call it our hawk protection over the top of it, and we're going to run it down. So now they got more of a salad bar down there. They also have, um, they have the regular food right here. So we'll go ahead and get that done. We're going to need probably more. Of... 
All right, that's a wrap. So they figured out successfully already because we did it incrementally. And it wouldn't have mattered really. We just do it that way to make the transition easier all the way through it. Now, for those that ask, no, this cannot be done with Cornish crosses. Maybe it can, I just haven't tried it and I have no intention of trying it. But let's just talk about the succession. At this point, these guys have now realized, okay, this is where I get my food. So when I start giving them food scraps at about a month old, then they're gonna be like, okay, yeah, this is where we go every single time to eat, poop, and then also they're getting a lot of their minerals through the comfrey and everything else we throw up in here. So anything that we extract from the garden that, ordinary, that would have been chop and drop, isn't that right, bird? <laughs> Any bit of that all goes in here. So that's really the transition. Okay, everything's pretty much done. The only thing that has me a little bit concerned at this point is that we have had a little bit of hawk pressure. We might have to add another one of these, but I think so far we're doing pretty good. All right, so they've stretched that out. Okay, so at the end of today, here's how it's gonna go down. I'm gonna let them eat to their heart's desire. They have more than they need. And at this point, during this induction phase, until I get a compost pile ready to go, throughout the week, every single day, at the end of every day, I'm gonna add more carbon. And then I'll put more food tomorrow morning, add more carbon, so on and so forth, until I hit to the top of this cage. And from a mathematical standpoint, I know that when I hit the top of this cage, I'm at one and a half cubic yards. Remember, you gotta have at least one in order to make this work. It's better that you have more than that. So that's what we're shooting for next. All right, folks. So until next time, remember, we have comfrey at the website. We have bone sauce, world's best deer repellent. <laughs> These guys are so cool to watch. Um, anything you need down below, we have that. Chicken processing, EMP shield, you name it. Remember, we also have another, that part two of the swale class coming up. We'll talk more about that in the next video. So if anybody's wanting to know how to do your guilds, how to plant things out, we're going to cover all of that down at Camden, Tennessee before the next Self-Reliance Festival. So all of you folks that missed out on the swale, here's your opportunity to see that and also figure out how we put trees, how we do everything within this system. All right, y'all, hopefully this is a blessing to you. Remember, check out that Permaculture Pimp Cast because we go into great detail about a lot of things also. So until next time, this is Billy from Permapastures Farm, where permaculture is my passion. We'll see you next time.